Thank you very much, John. It's a pleasure to speak here today uh, on Solitario. And, and as John mentioned, uh, we're, we're just not a zinc company anymore. We've gone back to our roots and have, a, I think, a very exciting gold story that I'll uh, talk about. A lot of forward-looking uh, uh, statements will be made today. And one of the things I want to talk about is our major new uh, gold initiative. It's in South Dakota, uh, near the largest gold mine in the history of the U.S., a home state mine. We have also two significant joint venture interests in zinc plays. These are two of, I think, two of the best zinc uh, uh, deposits out there that are owned by juniors, but we're joint ventured with two great partners, one the largest uh, zinc producer in the world, that's Tech, and the fifth largest, that's Nexa. Uh, well financed right now, a little over $5 million in the treasury, that's U.S., very disciplined ca uh, capital structure, 65 million shares. And as one of our previous uh, uh, speakers said, we've never had a reverse split either in the last uh, 30 years since our inceptions. So we were very protective of existing shareholders and uh, directors and management own about 9% of the stock. This is a, uh, a view of uh, some of the, let me see if I can, uh, the land position of Solitario, it's about 33,000 acres. The Homestake mine sits here. It has an endowment of 68 million ounces. The Wharf mine sits here. It has an endowment of about 10 million ounces. Guild Edge, 5 million ounces. And, and the people, this is a forgotten district. It's, it's really an amazing story. And Homestake operated this region 140 continuous years of uh, gold production uh, in the district. Homestake shut down in 2000. The Wharf mine continues to produce just under 100,000 ounces uh, a year. Now, all the, all the previous exploration was done in the main Homestake area. The area we're working in is to the west, and I think the reason it, it's never had any attention paid to it is it doesn't have the Precambrian -Cam, pre older rocks homestake formation at surface. It has these Paleozoic rocks, they're carbonates, and everyone thought, no gold here. And, and nothing could be further from the truth on this. If we look, uh, here, here's a Jeep road on forest service land. One of our geologists digging out rocks. It's hard to find rocks here. It's, it's forested, it's grass covered, and you just don't see much. But driving around in our first couple months of work here, and we started work here about two years ago, we started known, looking in the roadbeds of logging roads, and we'd see some discoloration. And, and here's a, a, a section here, drove over, it's probably had 20,000 people drive over it. And we start picking up samples, and there's gold in it. And in, this is bedrock here in this road. It's hard to find bedrock. And we were able to trench here. And our first eight trench samples, and I show five in this slide, you can see is, uh, get the right, 12 grams, three meters of 12 grams, three meters of 20 grams, three meters, I can't even read that. I think it's uh, three grams or so, a nine gram. And when the first eight samples, that, that was uh, 24 meters of about 15 grams. Now fast forward, we, we just finished sampling everything we could sample, finding uh, outcrop, and here we are right in a Forest Service road, six miles from the largest gold mine ever mined in the United States, and we're finding this kind of grade. Here's a, a trench, 36 meters of 17 grams, trench two, 60 meters of eight and a half grams, a little connector trench up here. Uh, I think that's uh, something like 15.6 meters of 17 grams. If you go up along this road, a little lower grade, uh, more like uh, two grams, and down here a half a gram, right in the Forest Service Road. Now we went further afield. This is called the downpour uh, uh, prospect now. Here's, here's the area I've been talking about. We went up about 500 meters, and look what we're still getting right out of the grass uh, covered areas. You got to get down on your hands and knees, you got to pull these rocks out. But these are all basically plus a gram. I think there's a 20 gram here, two grams, uh, three or four grams. You come down here, again, multi gram gold. You go to the south, 
Uh, here's a 87 gram sample, a three gram sample. So we're getting these float samples and trench samples over an 800 meter length here and, and up to three or four or 500 meters wide. Never been drilled. There's not a drill hole within miles of this and there's hardly any prospect pits. And if you've been in the exploration business as long as I have, 40 years now, you can't go anywhere in the States and find a half a gram without finding, you know, prospect pits everywhere. Completely devoid of that. Here's an, the area we found this year. And we're finding multiple areas and we've gotten very good at find these, finding these things right now. Our initial uh, sampling here, we had 11 samples, uh, grab samples. They're, they're, not out, they're not bedrock, but they're, they're real close to bedrock, we believe. And anyway, the average of these 11 samples, and I'm showing all the samples collected. I'm not leaving out the bad ones. Uh, 28 grams average. And this is about 275 uh, uh, meters here and about 200 meters wide. Again, we went further out and started expanding the work here. And here's the area I just talked about. It's uh, uh, averages uh, 28 grams here. We found a new area down here called Spur. It's six and a half grams. So tremendously exciting area. We have about 20 other areas where we have multi-gram gold, but we haven't had the time to go back to it. Here's one called uh, Sunrise. And Sunrise is, uh, you can see a 17 gram, an eight gram, and a 20 gram. And there's a number of lower grade uh, samples around that. We'll go back this coming year and do a lot more work. In the meantime, we're getting close to getting our drilling permits. And we'll be drilling, one of the things I wanna point out, we're gonna be drilling Here's where our surface samples are coming from now. We know from the geology that there's three other really good stratigraphic zones that if you look at the old district, they're very well mineralized. So we're gonna have, if with each drill hole, about a four to 500 meter drill hole, we're gonna hit three of these Paleozoic zones, and then we're gonna have the potential to look for a home stake deposit, which is the 50, 60 million ounce type of deposit. So this is a, a, a really great target to be going after. We're very excited about that. We think we're gonna be drilling sometime in June. Permitting has gone fairly well on the, on the uh, drill side of uh, things, and I think exciting times. Okay, looking at our, our underlying value assets are zinc plays, which is the Florida Canyon joint ventured with uh, Nexa and the Lick deposit in Alaska joint ventured with uh, Tech. If you look at these two de deposits combined, it's a very big measured and indicated resource, resource at over uh, two and a half billion pounds of zinc to our credit, not our other joint, the, 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 uh, our partners have the other side of these deposits. And then if you look in the inferred category for these two deposits, it's over two billion. So four and a half billion pounds of zinc uh, in the ground that's been well-defined. Uh, there's been over $100 million spent on these two properties to, combined. Uh, a view of uh, the Florida Canyon uh, uh, project is in Northern Peru. Uh, one of the things to keep in mind here, we're completely carried to production at Florida Canyon. Nexa uh, and, and our previous partner, Cominco, they spent over $80 million on this project. We've got about a million into it. We found it. We're pretty good at discovering brand new Greenfields deposits. And this is, uh, this is one we discovered uh, in Peru. So we're carried to production. Uh, they're going to lend us the money for construction. We pay them back through 50% of the net cash flow. No equity dilution, no capital risk on project construction, and, uh, and a great operating partner to boot. Uh, they're going after the biggest ever drilling program. We don't think uh, it's going to get started, the big program, until 2024. But we just learned last week that they are going to be doing a, about a $4 million drilling program, four to 5,000 meters uh, this coming year, it'll probably start in the June period, so that there'll be a lot of activity here. Finally, the lick deposits, it's in Alaska. Normally, you know, that would be too far away for, for logistics and an economic deposit, except it's only uh, about 11 miles 
from the largest zinc mine in the world, the lowest cost zinc mine in the world, that's called Red Dog. Tech operates Red Dog. Uh, at Lick, it's a 50-50 joint venture. We're not carried to production there. We contribute uh, our amount of money. Uh, we've seen, uh, we dr drilled for the first time with Tech uh, uh, last year in the last nine years, I believe. Uh, drilled three holes. We'll be reporting the results of those uh, in the not too distant future. And finally, uh, uh, that's a, a view of the Red Dog Catalyst for 2023. I th it's going to be a really good year for us. Uh, first of all, near term, uh, we have more additional uh, surface results from uh, the Golden Crest property I, um, as, it, as we receive them. We think they're going to, there's going to be some good ones in there uh, based on our past experience. So look forward to that over the next month or two. Uh, the other thing is we just completed a metallurgical uh, uh, study at uh, Florida Canyon. Uh, the initial results that we're seeing look positive. We'll be reporting on that, I believe, sometime in the latter part of February. Mid-year drilling starts at Golden Crest. I think that's going to be a real exciting program. I mean, we're going to be drilling next to 60 meters of 8 grams and, and, 20, and 36 meters of 17 grams. Uh, drilling at Florida Canyon, as I mentioned, and I, I'm pretty sure we're going to drill a few more holes at Lick. Uh, we haven't decided on that budget yet. Um, and end of year, you know, potentially we may split this company into a zinc segment and a, and a gold segment because two different investor uh, bases for each of those. Uh, it won't happen this year, but we'll, we'll start looking at it seriously uh, in the not too distant future. So the kind of the value proposition I see for Solitario is a really well um, uh, undervalued zinc assets with two great partners. And then the upside is, is this Golden Crest property that, that we think have, has enormous potential. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.